So in 3D content creation, the only end result we're really interested in is to have light bounce off of virtual surfaces in order to construct a final image. So we need a way of defining surfaces in 3D space. If we had sufficient computational power, an effective way of doing this would be to basically simulate the position of every molecule composing an object. This would make for a great simulation and it'd probably be indistinguishable from reality, but we have nowhere near the resources to do this. So we have to simplify the simulation somehow. A reasonable step in the right direction would be to say, well, we only really need to simulate the molecules on the surface of the object because the ones inside don't interact, at least all that much, with light bouncing off the surface of the object. So let's only simulate the object's surface and then figure out some tricks for transparent objects and objects that absorb light. This is a pretty good optimization, but still not nearly enough since we would still have to simulate billions of molecules. So we'll take it one step further and average the locations of many molecules to a single point, and consider this point to be an important feature for defining the surface of the object. In 3D graphics, we call this a vertex. We connect vertex pairs together to form edges, and finally, we fill in sets of edges to form faces. The most basic type of face is one with three edges. Computationally, a three-sided polygon, or triangle, is extremely useful as it has a number of properties. First of all, it's always flat. Three points, no matter what orientation they're in, will be coplanar. Polygons with four or more edges can be bent or folded and are not guaranteed to be flat. Second, as two vectors can be found from three points, the cross product of the vectors can be calculated and thus the polygon's normal vector can be found. So we can always figure out which direction the flat polygon is pointing. Finally, a triangle can define a surface which extends infinitely in all directions. This can be represented by a plane equation. The triangle sets boundaries on this plane by its edges, and therefore we have a complete simulation of a surface that we can bounce light off of. Quadrilateral polygons are possible as well, and commonly used in 3D graphics. The primary reason many 3D models are constructed using quads is to achieve clean results when subdivided using the Catmull Clark subdivision surface algorithm, and also to aid in selecting edge and face loops. We'll talk about this more later on in the lecture. Now, this is important to understand. 3D artists might tell you that quads are the best type of polygon or that triangles are evil. This is only true in the sense that quads are essential for many types of polygon modeling. Every other application of 3D graphics, such as lighting, shading, rendering, physics simulations, etc., rely on the fact that any polygon, including quads, can be broken down into their component triangles. Most of the mathematics that 3D graphics is built on only works with triangles.